humble fucking beginnings. How do you build equity from humble beginnings? You've learned. You have learned who the fuck you are. And guess what? You're all fuck ups. I was a fuck up in the beginning. And guess what? You learn. Oh, I keep making the same mistake. How do I know I'm keep making this mistake? Because I'm journaling it. I'm recording what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, why I see this. Why do I think it's going to appear in the chart? Am I mad about something? Am I going into the marketplace on an emotional high? Everything feels good. And I feel like, well, you know, I mean, I can't lose. Let me go in there. All those things are characteristics are going to, they're going to repeat. And you need to identify what they are because if they're hurting you, you need to go right to the root cause of what causes that. And if you have that in your mind before you press the button, it's better for you not to take the trade then until you wrestle these demons into submission. Otherwise, you'll talk yourself into doing shit that you shouldn't be doing and talking yourself out of the things you should be. Folks, I'm sorry, but they don't make fucking trading psychology books that's going to tell you this. But this is exactly what the fuck you need to hear. You're listening to somebody that went through it. And I begged everybody that had more experience than me, please direct me to books, direct me to teachers, direct me to somebody that knows how to conquer all this stuff. I'm wrestling all these things and I can't figure it out. Well, just like I promised you, if you journal, <laughs> you're making the fucking best fucking trading book ever. And you're writing it yourself. And it's strange because it should never be shared with anybody. That makes it a treasure. That makes it an heirloom that you can pass on to your children. That that was a time capsule every day of your life. What you were thinking that day. The decisions that you were making that day that helped frame the legacy that they're living off of now in the future. That's a unique experience that people can't get the same from a photograph. You can have photographs and old movies and eight millimeter films and you know all kinds of shit. But it's totally different when you see the blueprints of what your future family is going to live off of. What you did, the engineering moments of how you put all this stuff together for you to make it work for you. How you framed every decision that you're making financially for you and your future and your family's future and the legacy wealth that you're creating. But you think it's something you shouldn't do. It's a time waster. Oh, it's this, that, and the other thing. I promise you, folks, I promise you this. Anybody worth their salt as a trader making serious money, they're journaling. And they did journal. Nobody swings by the seat of their pants and just says, well, you know, I'm just going to wing it. There can be people that do that. Gamblers come into the casinos every year and take down big hauls. But are they doing it every year, every month? No. They're just a flash in a pin. Just everything lined up for them right then. Do you, want your, do you want your trading to be like that? Do you want your success to be hinged on the basis of a lottery-like win? Some of you said, I don't give a fuck how it comes as long as I can get it, right? <laughs> I'm just cut from a different cloth. I want to feel good that I earned it. I want to feel good that I'm teaching you a method that can be transferable. And I absolutely have proven it's transferable. I have people all around the world, and many of them making serious salaries off of trading now. And they're just underneath the cusp of becoming millionaires. And guess what? You're not going to see ever an algo box. You ever come out with proof that they're a millionaire. You're never going to see a $600,000 algo box profitable trader in real money, not market replay reports. Vinny, I'm sorry that I have to talk this way to you. I never wanted to do these things. And when we were talking privately, I told you all these things. I said, I'm not the person you're making me out to be. I invited you to have me and my wife share a dinner with you a year ago. And I told you I didn't have nothing to do with Shane Fields doing whatever the hell he did that day. And I thought that was a skit. I thought that that was something that was cooked up by you. And then when that guy started talking all that shit, I was like, what the hell? That was nuts. So I'm anxious to see when you get to court with that whole show. And when you hear that man tell you I had absolutely nothing to do with that, 
I absolutely expect an apology because you have a title on one of those videos, that very video. You're claiming that I'm a child molester. Do you have any idea the, the liability that you have doing that? I want you to understand something. And I'm making this public again. I had nothing to do with that. Zero. And the things that you're spinning off on about, absolutely baseless and untrue. I would never do that. Never. The things that you've said about my family and my children are absolutely heinous and they're untrue. And you've done more damage to your image and your brand than I ever could do. You need to take stock in what it is that you're doing. You might be making a little bit of money off of revenue, but that shit's going to dry up. It's all going to dry up. And once it's on the internet, it never really goes away. And your children, as precious and beautiful as they are right now, they're going to grow up. And they're going to see these things that people are saying about you. And it's going it, it to, you don't see it or feel it right now. But that shame is going to be very, very deep in its cuts. I did not one time have any intentions of doing anything to bring you any kind of harm or shame. That's never happened. That doesn't mean I wouldn't whoop your fucking ass in a trading competition. So I know, and you fucking know it too. I would dismantle you. You did not join that Robbins Cup, and you know damn fucking well that the shit you put out there supposedly by Joe Robbins or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, that, that, that guy did not fucking say I went out there and blew four or five, six fucking accounts or whatever. That never fucking happened. That never fucking happened. All this stuff is bullshit. You need to take stock in what you're doing. There's, I'm sure, I'm certain that you're taking notes on what I'm teaching. I'm absolutely certain. Everything that you have been doing for the last five or seven years has been inspired by me, whether you fucking want to admit it publicly or not. You've done it a few times in your live streams where you say, oh yeah, the J-Hook, that's ICT's optimal trade entry. Yep. I even told you to code this stuff. If you can do it, I have users, well not users, but I have students that would use your shit if you could really do it and make it consistent. Take all that shit off your charts, all that bloated bullshit. You're getting there. It's slowly happening. But the things that you're building your stuff on, it's all bullshit. Incorporate the stuff. I'm, I'm not even saying market it with my stuff. You don't, you don't ever have to do that. You never have to come out in public to say it. You don't even have to say it to me in an email. You don't have to say nothing to me. Just do it. And I promise you, your shit will start working. And people that want that crutch of being able to go out there and try to do something and it's built on sound logic. Look at the fucking thing my son's using right now. You trade all these little micro couple ticks types of trades and over leverage them. Take the over leveraging away. Build it with one contract basis. Automate it. It has a negative R. It doesn't matter. That consistently will drive transactions. And if you automate that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you people right now are sitting there thinking, you know, ICT, you're right. If you could make that work, I would like to have something like that. And again, like I told you in the past, I don't want any royalties off of anything. Nothing. But you went on this fucking vendetta, man, for, for nonsense because I didn't come out and defend you. I barely even fucking knew you were. And it's fucking creepy as fuck that you act like we've been friends since childhood and I backstabbed you. I have no idea who the fuck you were, man. But the shit that you're spewing is lies, man. It's fucking lies. <clears throat> so, anyway, let's cover Cameron's model and then I'm going to close this one because it's about time for me to grab something to eat. When I sat with Cameron, I told him, I said, look, to keep you from overtrading, to keep you from having um, the issues and worrying about where your stop loss should be moved or where partial should be taken, you can only trade with one contract. And initially, I wanted him to trade with a micro. That, that's what I wanted him to do. And it wasn't about the amount of money. It was about him learning discipline and seeing the 
the compounding effect of doing one thing well and just letting it happen over time. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Because if you do very, very well and you can find 10 handles very easy, very quickly, go in and find it. This is applicable to Forex, by the way. I know everybody likes to ask me questions like, I didn't fucking say this before, but it works in Forex the same way. Any market, it's the same thing. Liquidity and inefficiencies are the thing. Everything else is nonsense. Everything else is fucking bullshit. The idea of anticipating intraday volatility, that's what his model is. He's not even using the weekly bias. He's not using a daily bias. He's not looking at anything except for what is it, what's existing right now in price action. Now think about how easy this is. See, you're already going to doubt it because I'm not telling you to use the weekly bias. And I'm not telling you to worry about daily bias because all of you think that you're going to be extremely profitable if, if you know what the daily bias is. That's bullshit because I had students that could send me an email and I made them prove to me that because they would say, ICT, I know the daily bias and um, blah, blah, blah. But if I could know the right PD array on this particular model, I would be profitable. Okay, well, I demanded them, okay, before the trading session opened, I need you to send me an email. Tell me what the bias is going to be. And they were incorrect. So they're bullshitting me. Okay, I have students that will lie to me as their teacher. And I'm, I'm fully capable of accepting the fact that there are going to be people out there that are going to lie and say that my shit doesn't work because they aren't doing it correctly. That's why I said, bring your receipts. If you know that you have tried, show me that you have tried. Show me what you have been journaling. And showing me five fucking pages of scribbling is not journaling. That's somebody hurrying up trying to put something together to make it look like it. Because on face value, people's attention spans are very short. They're going to say, oh, yeah, he, I, I saw he journaled. What did he fucking journal? What did she journal? What did they journal? What were they looking for? What were they measuring? What were they fucking trying to do a case study on? What model are they trying to employ? Are they changing shit all the time when they go into the marketplace? Or are they looking for one particular thing? So to keep the whole bias issue out of the equation, to simplify it, just trading intraday volatility. That means whatever the market's going to do from the highest high and the lowest low that it will form that day, which you don't even need to know that. I have tools that'll do that. I've proven it publicly that I can fucking tell you what they are. And you watch me trade them. You don't have anybody else out there in any fucking trading community that's ever proven that. Just me. Now, Intraday volatility, that means you're going to be looking for an hourly or basically a 60 minute swing high or a swing low that is likely to move to. It's in close proximity to it. It's been going up for the last couple hours or so. And it's just getting real close to an obvious 60 minute high. If it's not doing that, go down to a 15 minute time frame. Look for a swing high that it might be gravitating to. If it's gravitating towards that 15-minute high, and real important, here's the main filter, here's the filter, folks. Okay, this is the fucking part that you're not gonna do. And when you fucking lose, you're gonna swear up and down that it fucking fails. <laughs> On a one or five minute chart, there if you're bullish, it must show a swing low taken and then reject and go higher. Whatever time frame, whether it be the one minute or five minute, whatever time frame that swing low is breached, it goes below it. It only needs to go by one tick. Doesn't need to close below it either. It just needs to go below it. That time frame that has the swing low, it must have a candle close up after it takes that low. Once it does that, you immediately drop down to a 30 second chart but I can't have a 30 second chart. Then you can't fucking trade this model. Just apply it to a higher time frame. Instead of a 30 second, use the one minute and use the 15 minute and one hour chart. Everything's scalable. But I'm giving you something that you can test a lot. There's lots of examples doing this throughout the week from the beginning of trading on Sunday to Friday's close. There's many instances of, of you going in and going to be able to back test this and have no bias. 
And you're going to have losing trades. It's okay. But you have to have whatever that time frame is, the one minute or the five minute, there has to be a stop run. One of the first primary principles I taught when I stepped out on baby pips is the real move will not happen. The dynamic price runs where there's magnitude and, and delirium speed, that will happen after a pool of liquidity is engaged. That means if the market's bullish, if you think it's going to go higher, I think it's going to draw up to some level, whether it be a high, a relative equal high, uh, inefficiency above market price, whatever that is up there that you're framing as a reason for it to want to go up, it's far more likely to get up there with conviction and speed if there has been a short-term run on liquidity that's below the marketplace in the form of stops or sell-side liquidity. Because the market's going to go down to allow traders to buy those stops. What traders? Smart money. The algorithm is cowtailing to them. It's, a, it's, a hand, it's called handshaking. The market reprices to levels to allow handshaking to occur. That's the real term. That's exactly what's going on. And when those orders are being provided to the participants that are on the sideline, you're not seeing their fucking orders on the DOM, the depth of market. It's not dome, by the way. Dom, when that is showing those numbers and stuff, their orders are not sitting there. Smart money's orders are not sitting there. They're not. They're not fucking sitting there, folks. That's why I'm laughing at you when you're fucking using it and you're, and you're asking me, show me your order book. Show me your level two data. That's fucking bullshit. That's all bullshit. It's spoofing. Their orders are immediately piped in. Immediately. They're not sitting around waiting for you can read them. If they have their orders the size of their fucking orders and the volume of their fucking orders, if they were sitting out there where you could see them, you could really read sentiment then. They're never going to fucking let you do that. Why the fuck is it so hard for you not to see this? Because people on CNBC and people that are allowed to talk on CNBC that have no fucking real clout on Twitter. <laughs> I've been on CNBC. So therefore, my opinion matters. Get the fuck out of here. When it drops down to take the sell side when you're bullish, whatever that time frame is that has the swing load that it pierces and goes below, as soon as it does that, you have to wait for one candle to be up close. Once it does that, once it does that, then and only then do you drop down to the 30-second chart and you wait for a fair value gap to form and then you buy it. The best one is the first, but you can take continuous buys on a 30 second. Every time it creates a fair value gap or um, trades to a down close candle, you treat it like a bullish order block. And you can turn that single one contract model over time. If you submit the three months of doing it, you build discipline and you aim for that liquidity. But here's the thing. You might be just like my son and you're scared. You can't hold a trade. Okay. Best case scenario, put a limit order at 15. 15 handles, there it is. So you're risking 12 to make 15. That's not bad. It's a little bit better than one. But most of the time, my son has 10, 11, maybe 11 and a half, sometimes 12 handles. And he moves his limit order around if he ever uses it. Sometimes he's honest with me. He says, Dad, I don't have a limit order because I I'm afraid if I put it at 10 and it goes to 15, I'll be upset about that. So he's still not disciplined in that regard yet. He's, he's growing, but this model allows him that growth. It protects him from losing a lot because he can only trade with one contract. He can only take one trade per day. He can only do one thing. And it keeps him in a tight little bubble where he can only, like a Petri dish, okay? I've taken him <laughs> and I've put him inside of a Petri dish and said, okay, this is all you can fucking do. You can bloom and grow all you want, but you're never getting into that fucking Petri dish until I tell you new parameters. And so far, his growth has been perfect. It's showing him incremental gains. It's realistic gains. I think, honestly, if everybody out there, even people that hate me, those results are consistent, aren't they not? They are. They're not perfect. He's got an 80% strike rate in terms of his trades. At 18 years old, that's fucking phenomenal. That's fucking phenomenal. I don't give a fuck where you came from. That's good shit.
But see, you are equating it to some of the things that I've done or you see other people do, and they may not even be true. Don't look at the amount of money as the, as the reason to say something is good or bad. Because what if you were making $250 a day? That's going to mean something to you, isn't it? It's going to mean a whole hell of a lot to you. Whatever you're aiming for, as far as the draw on liquidity, over time, you'll learn to hold it a little bit more. See, he has to submit to this for a few more weeks before he's allowed to go for 20 handles. Because he's not going to have, right now he doesn't have it yet. He doesn't have the wherewithal to be able to hold the trade for 20 handles because he's nervous. He's afraid. He's expecting one of those weird, you know, crazy, big down close candles or wicks that come against him real quick. He's expecting it. That's what he's having in his mind. He thinks they're going to jump out like a boogeyman. And you're laughing and smiling thinking, that's exactly how I feel every time I'm in a trade. And you know how you beat that? You know how you beat that boogeyman? 